Let's do some more jargon. Today, let's talk about things a little closer to the games themselves. We'll start with genres. Some of these genres may be familiar to you, some may not. RPG is a role-playing game. Typically in an RPG, you play a character who plays through a story, you level up, get stronger, usually with some sort of stat-driven combat system behind the scenes. Sometimes you create your own character, sometimes that character is assigned to you. RPG has become a pretty broad genre. More and more games include RPG elements in them these days. FPS is a first-person shooter. This means that the camera is essentially inside the head of the person playing. You usually have a gun. Most often these are multiplayer, but they don't necessarily have to be. A shmup is a shoot 'em up. This is the top down, typically upward facing shooter where you are moving a ship or something back and forth and shooting um, things as they enter on screen. It can also go sideways as well. There's no particular need for it to be just an upward facing perspective. Sometimes you also hear this genre called bullet hell because some of the more modern versions of this game are just covered in millions and millions of bullets shooting all at once. An RTS is a real-time strategy game. Unlike a turn-based strategy game in an RTS, everything is going in real time. There is typically no pausing. Usually this involves building some sort of base and then using that base to generate units that you then go to attack the other player. Might be multiplayer, might be single player. The roguelike and road light, you need to start with the definition of what Rogue is. Rogue is a very old game back in the very, very early days of video games. What this typically refers to in when something is roguelike is that it contains most of the features of a rogue game, which means that you are typically descending into some sort of dungeon. There is permadeath, but there's usually some sort of generational idea. Where So when you die, you come back to life and you can then go back down and try to get deeper and something survives each of your run throughs of the game so that you are generating a character through many passes through the level. On the other hand, a rogue light is sort of the same idea, but with just some of the aggravation removed from the system. This is kind of a popular genre at the moment because it's seen as maybe a return to something old school. So things sometimes get branded with one of these two naming conventions when maybe it's not fully deserved. I find it unfortunate that the two different genres sound almost exactly the same, roguelike, roguelite. They are literally different by one single letter. MOBAs are multiplayer online battle arenas. This is most famously uh, in exemplified by League of Legends. But Dota, Defense of the Ancients, is really where this genre originated. MOBAs are interesting because they exist as a genre, but much like you saw with FPSs in the very early days, they aren't that different from each other yet. They typically have the same map as all of the other entrants in the genre, they tend to have very similar flow of their games. Maybe this will remain because argue, you could argue the same thing that all soccer games are the same because they reflect an existing sport. Because MOBAs have a very competitive play style, because they are treated mostly like a sport, it's possible that this genre will always remain in a state where the games are all very similar to each other. But potentially, like we saw with first-person shooters, which in the early days were called Doom-likes or Wolfenstein clones or things like that, we may see this genre start to fracture apart and turn into a wider variety of things. I guess we will see. An MMO is a massively multiplayer online game. So most of the MMOs out there are MMORPGs, World of Warcraft or EverQuest. These are MMORPGs, usually just compressed down to MMO. There are some examples of MMOs that are not RPGs. In an MMO, there's a very large number of people playing all together all at once. It might have PvP, meaning that you can fight each other, 
or it might only have PvE, meaning that you're fighting against the game itself. Some of these games have millions and millions of players playing simultaneously. Some of them are much smaller. Battle Royales and looter shooters are kind of like micro MMOs, typically with smaller player counts, but they share a lot of the same kinds of thinkings. Battle Royale is a fairly large number of players, but way less than an MMO, like 100 people, start in a map that shrinks and the match ends when one person or one team is left standing. Fortnite is the most famous Battle Royale game, but there are a lot out there. They have the advantage of having very quick matches and essentially a guarantee of an end game. Because the maps typically shrink down to nothing, the match has to end eventually because eventually everyone's sort of forced into everyone's lap. Looter shooters, Destiny, Anthem, The Division, these are looter shooters. So they combine the aspects of an RPG around getting better and better loot with the FPS or potentially a third person shooter style gameplay into something that is online. You play with other people, but not exactly an MMO. So I threw out the term PvP and PvE there when I was talking about MMOs, but this is actually something that applies to really most games. PvP means player versus player, which means you are fighting against another human or you have a team that's fighting against another team. PvE, player versus environment, you are fighting against the game as a whole. Co-op means cooperative, so you could be in a PvE game that is co-op, so you have a group of people who are fighting against the game itself. These potentially are things that can coexist and layer over each other in different possible combinations. Moving into the genre that I'm most familiar with, which is RPGs, you have subcategorization within the RPG genre, within any of the genres, but this is the one that I'm most able to speak to. You have JRPGs, which refers to Japanese RPGs. Now, these don't necessarily have to be from Japan, though if you make a JRPG and you're not from Japan, I think people are going to maybe challenge that label. Typically, a JRPG is very story focused. Often it has a combat system that sort of sits apart from the world exploration. That's not a necessary part of the genre, but it's a thing that you see quite commonly. On the flip side, you have CRPGs, which are basically just means computer RPGs. And this is referring more to the old school style of Western RPG, more like the Baldur's Gates they tend to be more tactical, more focused on the combat experience where the storytelling might take a back seat. A game like Baldur's Gate 2, very strong story, but would be considered a CRPG. Often CRPGs are using an isometric top-down, more tabletop look, not a requirement for the genre, but something you see quite commonly in the genre. TTRPG just means tabletop RPG. So this is literally referring to the pen and paper style of RPG. So Dungeons and Dragons is a TTRPG. An action RPG is what actually most RPGs are these days. This means that the combat is happening in real time, it might have some way of pausing, but you are controlling a character or even many characters in real time and the level of tactics as a result is usually quite a bit lower. And then MMORPGs we talked about, this is the RPG form of an MMO. Within the games themselves, you also have extra jargon that often comes up. I will cover the ones that I came up with. If you have any that you want to have defined, throw that down in the comments and we can maybe do another video about this. There is a lot of this stuff. AOE means area of effect. So if you cast a fireball, it has an AOE. It has an area of effect where it goes on the ground and affects everything within an area. Dot, damage over time, means that something hits something else and then does damage as a series of ticks. Two possible uh, examples of this that are different from each other. If I have a bleed effect and I hit someone and then they take uh, damage over time from being wounded, then that dot is applied to them. Conversely, if I put down something like a cloud that does damage with 
in the cloud every second. That would also be considered a dot. So those are subtly different from each other, but would both be called dots typically. A proc, this one is just means an application of a process, which is weird. But in most games, what this means is that you are proccing something onto another thing. You are making them vulnerable or you are hitting someone and freezing them or you're hitting someone and making them vulnerable to acid for a little while. You are proccing the acid vulnerability. I don't know why it's called that, but that's what it's called. HP means hit points. It just is a number that is keeping track of how many hits you can take. It could be measured in a bunch of different ways. It could be that each hit does a single hit point of damage. It could be that different hits do different amounts of hit points of damage, depending on the game. I did an entire video on this topic all by itself. XP means experience points. So in RPGs, typically you are gaining levels and you gain levels by gaining experience points until you cross a threshold and gain a level. These are usually given out for killing monsters. In some cases, they are given out for completing plots or even just picking up treasure. Aggro, which means aggression, is the attention of the enemy. So in MMOs, you often have one of the classes that is able to control aggro very well, meaning that they are able to force the enemies to fight them as opposed to fighting their teammates. A lot of the fighter style classes have some kind of aggro control, taunt being the way that you typically do it, is you are drawing aggro onto yourself to keep it away from the other members of your party. Within the tech sphere, you have the concept of an engine. A game is the bit of art that contains all of the content and thinking and everything around the game but it runs on top of an engine. An engine is the code base that is what is responsible for making the game go. There are a lot of publicly available engines now. Unity and Unreal are the most famous ones, but sometimes game companies make their own engines for a variety of reasons. When you are playing a game, it contains all of the content and then an engine into one package. That is what the game actually is. Profiling is the act of figuring out where your performance and memory and all of those sorts of things are going in your game when you are making trying to make your game run faster or run in less memory you are doing the act of profiling fps means frames per second this is just a measurement of how fast your game is running typically most games are trying to run at 30 fps 30 frames every second or 60 fps though sometimes rpgs will dip down into the 20s because they can kind of get away with it different genres typically want a different steady FPS in order to feel really smooth. The biggest thing that most people notice with FPS is actually variability. A game that runs at a constant 30 will feel better than one that is bouncing between 30 and 60 and hitting all the numbers in between. You will feel that judder and jitter and change. But in some game genres like FPSs and fighting games, the frame rate really matters because every single frame of interaction is important to your experience in the game. In other games like RPGs, they're a little bit looser and the frame rate isn't quite as important. But you can really feel the difference visually, aesthetically, between a 30 FPS game and a 60 FPS game. If you sit down and play them side by side, you will feel the difference. You might not know what you're seeing or what you're feeling, but it's there. Laud is level of detail. So one of the ways that game engines deal with drawing all this stuff is they have different, different versions of every single thing that it's drawing that it uses at different distances away. When you're looking at a character right up, right up by the camera, then you are going to have thousands, tens of thousands, millions of polygons being rendered. You're gonna have very detailed shaders and a lot of technology and a lot of effort going into rendering the face and each individual hair. If that guy is 200 meters away, you don't need to do all that. You might replace the hair with a single polygon that is just kind of the right color. You are going to turn off all of the fancy shaders. You are going to let the entire character render a lot more cheaply. You'll drop the number of polygons down. This allows you to keep the number of characters up 
by adjusting the expensiveness of the character based upon how big they are in the frame. Streaming or asset streaming is where you keep most of what you need on the disc. Maybe that's the DVD, but these days usually it's the, the hard drive in the PC or console, and then you bring it in as you need it. Some games don't use any form of streaming. They load an entire level and everything that's in the level into memory all at once when you enter the level and then keep it in memory. This allows them to be very quick and very responsive, but it really limits how much they can have going on. What you will see in a lot of games, especially open world games, is sometimes you will see things essentially pop in as you approach them. This is the asset streaming falling behind or possibly just being set up slightly wrong. So you are looking right at the edges of what it considers important. And then as you cross it, you're seeing things pop into being. Threads refer to multiple different execution threads within the game or executable. Each thread is essentially running on its own with some relatively complicated ways of communicating between the different threads. Basically, all consoles and PCs these days have a bunch of processors doing a bunch of different things, and you can take advantage of this and have things running in parallel as long as you are able to pass control around uh, effectively. Not really a topic worth going into into too much detail. Just know that when you hear threads, it just means multiple things going on at the same time. DirectX is Microsoft's interface for its hardware. So this covers actually really kind of everything, input, output, it handles a lot of the graphics. It has become pretty much the dominant interface used these days, not used on the Sony hardware, but they have something that looks an awful lot like DirectX these days. Okay, I'm probably gonna get myself into trouble on this, but let's talk about some of the jargon in the graphics specifically. Forward rendering and deferred rendering are two philosophies when it comes to the way your graphics works. So with forward rendering, you are doing all of the work as you kind of come across it, building up towards the frame that you are ultimately going to render onto the screen of the device. Deferred rendering, you are delaying some of that rendering work to kind of batch it up in order to do it all at once. Forward rendering is simpler, and if you are running on something that's relatively low spec, it's probably faster because Deferring your rendering requires you to package things up in such a way to come back to them later. But in more complicated scenes, in with more complicated concepts of lighting and shaders, deferred rendering usually ends up being faster and allows you to do more things. So most engines are moving to deferred rendering. And this is where all the graphics programmers can yell at me in the comments, because I think I got that right, but I'm not 100% sure. Draw calls are basically how much work you're putting on the graphics hardware. Each draw call is the act of drawing something onto the screen. So if you have too many draw calls, you're going to drag your graphical performance down. Culling is the act of removing things from the need to be considered from the graphic engine. A very simple one is anything that's actually behind the camera doesn't need to be drawn. So it can be culled from the consideration of the graphics hardware. If your culling gets too aggressive, then you can end up accidentally removing things that maybe should be drawn. For example, if you have a tree behind the camera and it reaches over and has a branch that ends up in front of the camera, if you've accidentally called the entire tree, that branch might end up not rendering even though it should. Occlusion is things getting in front of other things. They occlude them. If they completely occlude them, then you can actually call that object because it doesn't need to be drawn because there's something in between it and the camera, so it can be called and doesn't need to be drawn. Isometric, uh, I mentioned this when I talked about CRPGs. Normally, when you are looking at something, the your your light rays converge at infinity so things that are farther away get smaller that's why things get smaller in distance because their things are moving at angles in an isometric view you make all of those 
lines parallel. It can give you a very interesting look. Typically it's used for an isometric top-down view like Baldur's Gate, but you can actually put an isometric view into other camera setups. Isometric just means everything is going to be perfectly parallel. You are not going to be able to use size as a hint as to how far away something is which is why typically it's used in top-down where that distance isn't a necessary piece of information. Shaders are what runs in the graphic software to determine what the specific surface of something looks like. Shaders are made up of textures, which are basically just an image, and a bunch of different math to determine what the lighting looks like, maybe if it is shiny, or if it looks kind of cloudy. They are a bunch of math combined with textures in order to determine what the final surface looks like. Light maps are a form of baked lighting, meaning that it is lighting that is calculated not while the game is running. It was calculated beforehand at some point. They could be generated as you were entering the level, but more likely they were generated during the game's creation. A light map is, in its simplest form, sort of just a, a black and white texture that kind of applies on top of the level to sort to essentially say where places are light and where places are dark. On the other hand, dynamic lighting is lighting that is calculated in real time as you are moving through the level. If you are carrying around a light source, then that light source has to use dynamic lighting because it is moving around. But often when you have a lighting scene that is fixed, it makes a lot of sense to do some form of baked lighting because it lets you do things to a much higher level of fidelity. Ray tracing is the act of drawing a line from the camera back out to the source and from the lights to each thing to figure out exactly how the lighting interacts with objects correctly. Real-time ray tracing is becoming incredibly more common. When I started in this industry, this was a complete pipe dream. People couldn't imagine that this was going to actually be a thing that was ever going to be available. But now we're actually seeing graphic hardware that actually supports this in real time. In anti-aliasing, you are trying to smooth out the edges of uh, your rendering. So typically this is done by averaging the pixels with the pixels around it in some way, but there are other techniques. This will give you a smoother edge, especially when things are up really close to the camera. In video game 3D art, tessellation means that you take an object and you add more polygons to it. So if you have something that is supposed to be a curve, but it's made up of three polygons, if you tessellate it, you add more polygons to round it out. Chromatic aberration is a physics term. It basically just means that all the different wavelengths of light actually bend at slightly different rates. In gaming, you're starting to see it as a thing that is simulated around the edges of objects to try to make the objects in the world look more realistic. You're simulating that kind of blurry, blue and red thing around the edges of objects to try to make things look more realistic, like they sit in the scene uh, in a more realistic way. Like before, we're just touching on the surface of a lot of these things, and I'm sure I've missed a ton of bits of jargon. If there's anything that you are interested in me covering, put that down in the comments because we can always make another one of these. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you are interested in becoming a member, there's a link to that down in the description. Like before, this is a nearly bottomless well. If there are topics or specific piece of jargon you would like defined, throw those down in the comments because we can always do another one of these. Did I get anything wrong? Please correct me in the comments because we are only skipping off the surface of a lot of these topics. So sometimes I'm getting things wrong because I don't understand them. Sometimes I'm getting things wrong because I just haven't been able to provide adequate context. So please feel free to correct me in the comments. I will see you again soon. Thank you.